You guys, I'm so excited. Normally, you get to hear me interviewing so many amazing guests all the time, but today I actually went to Miami to Ben Azadi's house, and he interviewed me. Hope you like it. Chantel Ray, welcome to Miami and to the Keto Camp Podcast. Yay, I love this studio. I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. Thanks for being here. I'm excited to chat with you. This is round two. I was looking yes. up the previous time we spoke, which was in October of 2020, yeah. when you're on my podcast. Now this is round two in person, and a lot has changed and evolved, and a lot with your story has changed and evolved as well. So I'm excited to chat with you. And let's start right here. You know, you just told me offline that the past year, there were some health challenges that you have been experiencing, some things, pieces to the puzzle that you started to put together. So what, what led you to explore that, and then what did you find out? Yeah, actually, it's funny because this morning, today's my birthday. Is it? Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. I didn't even know that. Happy birthday. 21 Thanks. years old. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> well, my mom sent me this uh, plaque and it said, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will hear I will heal you and it's mm. a verse in 2 Kings 25 and I have you know literally been this past year has been my worst health year ever and so really? it's kind of like when you're a health professional and you are not in great health and I felt like God's just been saying to me I've had to put you through this mm. so you can then turn around and really help other people heal. Because you you can't help other people heal until you've actually been there and gone through all the things that I've Very gone true. through. Very true. And I feel like, so I, I what I did was I wrote down, my friend said to me, she's like, okay, so what have you done to start to kind of heal yourself a little bit more? And I just randomly started writing them down and we looked at it and it came up with this random acronym that doesn't really make sense, but it says spa for the win. And I was like, yeah, that kind of is good. You know, you, we want to kind of be in this spa-esque health, you know, space, but it's just spa for the win. And it's just kind of some of these things that I've wrote down that when I'm not feeling good, I go back and go, okay, let's look at this piece. What can I do to improve it? You guys, if you've been listening to my podcast, you know I've been talking about Masszymes, which is a digestive enzyme from Bioptimizers. And I want you to know that here's the thing. For me, having a digestive enzyme is a game changer because one of the biggest things that happens to me is I get really tired after my meal if I don't do it, and I have a problem with nutrient absorption. So if you could be eating the cleanest diet ever, but if you're not absorbing it, that's an issue. So this month they're doing a really great special and you're gonna get a free bottle of the digestive enzymes from Bioptimizers. And so all you have to do is pay a nominal shipping fee. That's it, no other strings attached. It's the best thing ever. So get your free bottle of digestive enzymes. It's called Masszymes. Go to masszymes.com slash wasteaway free and use the coupon code wasteaway10. That's it. So masszymes.com slash wasteaway free. Use the coupon wasteaway10. It's awesome. That's brilliant. So SPA for the win. Mm -hmm. Before we get to each individual acronym, and maybe it actually ties into what I'm about mm -hmm. to ask, what were some of the things that came up for you with your health? What did you start to notice? Yeah, so I have an autoimmune condition, which is Hashimoto's for my thyroid, which I've had that for a while, but I've been able to kind of manage it. But I then started getting psoriatic arthritis where my joints, just all my joints hurt so much. And, and you have to realize like, Every single day, I go like four or five times a week. First of all, at my house, I have a full, you know, red light nice. at my house. Yeah. I have two top of the line saunas. I have, um, you know, we've got like an ice bath thing there. Plus I belong to this thing called restore cryotherapy, you know, where you can go to the cryotherapy, red light again there, um, you know, just doing all of the things, right? That kind of people are doing for health, but yet my health and my joint pain and everything, you know, I'm not eating seed oils. I'm not, you know, doing all these things. I'm eating as clean as I possibly can. And then to still have major 
you know, joint pain was and sometimes like debilitating. So it's just some of the things that I had to do to improve that. Yeah, that sounds debilitating. And, mm -hmm. and it can be frustrating. You're right. Being in the health space, educating so many people yeah. on these principles. And then all of a sudden you start noticing, like, why don't you feel well? You know, I've been there myself as well. So how do you feel now? How do you feel today? I'm feeling better okay. and I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm, I'm glad because I, I, I want to tell people a lot of times when you're like, when you get yourself and you're in a bad health position, you know, a lot of people are like, do this trick, this, this, and this. And truly it's more like six months to a year to really start healing your cells and really healing yourself from within, it doesn't just happen like that. Everyone wants this magic fix and it's truly not. And the people who are real with you are going to say, we're looking at eight months. We're looking at a year to really kind of get your cells deep within and heal your body. That's exactly correct. That's the truth. And most people, most health educators don't teach that truth because they're trying to get people in with some quick weight loss trick or whatever it mm -hmm. is. But I tell people all the time, years, not months, especially mm -hmm. with heavy metals detox. Yes. It takes years to clear it out of your body, not months. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to feel better month after month, right. but to get to that optimal level, exactly. to your point, it takes a lot longer mm -hmm. than just a month. Yeah. So le that leads us to this... Uh, a new acronym because you had an older one that we talked about last time. <laughs> yeah. So spa for the win, the mm -hmm. S. Let's outline that. Yeah. So number one is stress. And the reason why I say that is because I was doing all the things that I'm going to talk about that you need to do, but my stress level was off the charts. So with my business, I decided to create my own software and I like employed like five different web developers because I was like, I'm going to develop my own software to do this and do that. And I'm telling you, dealing with web developers and the cost of it and everything that I've had to do with it was such an enormous stress on me that it just it's one of those things that you have to go, like my husband looked at me and he was like, we're cutting that out. Like mm. you have to be done with that. I don't care if, you know, we can then sell the software for millions and millions of dollars. It's not worth the stress that you have put yourself under. You can do all these things, but if you don't get rid of that stress and kind of really have a self-talk with yourself and say, I don't care if I'm making millions on this or doing, if you're in a career, let's say, that is just such, such high stress and you have to make the decision that health is wealth and that is so much more important. So that's why I put that S as number one is figuring out what is causing you the most stress and getting rid of that ASAP. So did you end up uh, just washing your hands I've, with it? I washed most of my hands okay. with it. So that's why I think I'm I'm 20% still in it. I've hired someone that's kind of running it and doing it and kind of handed it off. But really, I need to kind of sell that piece, the technology piece that I've built, and just sell it and move on. That's kind of where it is. It's an important point because what's the use of, yeah, earning millions and millions of dollars, but then your health continues to decline. Yep. You're under massive amounts of stress. And stress comes from three areas, mental, emotional. In this case, there's a lot of mental, emotional stress. Yeah. There's physical, there's, there's chemical stress as well. So for those listening and watching, those are the three areas that you want to mm -hmm. look at with the S part and the stress reduction. Yeah, exactly. Then we have the P. Yeah. So P stands for parasites or poop. And first of all, this is what I tell people. I say, okay, if you, right now, if you want to know if you have parasites, just take your hand like this and go ahead and put your fingers here and see if you have a pulse. Do you have a pulse? I don't feel it. Oh, <laughs> right. wait. <laughs> but everyone has a pulse, I have pulse, a pulse. Right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I wasn't touching everyone the wrong thing. Everyone has a pulse, and so that's what everyone does. Parasites. They're like, wait a minute, I don't I don't feel my pulse. But For you, a second, you I'm have like, one. am I a vampire right now? <laughs> and then I felt it, yeah. So every so person has ev parasites. I don't care. I don't care who <laughs> you are. You have parasites. Now, some of us have parasites to the point that it overrids your body, and that's what has happened to me over the last year. And I've done so many parasite cleanses, so many things to get rid of the parasites. And I'm actually going to do a free masterclass 
where I'm going to teach people exactly what I did to, because the thing about parasites that you have to be really careful with is you have to be able to get rid of them, but the die off phase Mm. of parasites is so bad that if you do it too much and try to kill them too fast, now you're going to be even in worse condition than you were. So um, I really got into coffee enemas. That's nice. another thing that I really got into this year. And I actually have some training videos on. I have it in my house. I show people, you don't actually get to see the full amount, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it looks like I don't am. Worry. It looks yeah. like I'm doing Understood. it. Understood. But... I like there's a very specific coffee people don't realize like you can't just use the coffee that you're using like that you're drinking Mm -hmm. there's actually companies out there correct that you can buy this coffee and that's all they do for a living like they make this coffee for coffee enemas so I've created, I'm going to do this free masterclass for people where they can just really learn how to do the coffee enemas, how to get rid of those parasites, how to kind of get different things that they're doing that can make it where you titrate up and titrate down. Because I'm telling you right now, what happens is people are like, how to kill parasites? And then they do these cleanses that are so intense and then they're literally on the floor and they Mm -hmm. can't go to work. They can't go to their regular job and that does not work. So there are certain things and certain enzymes. I kind of put them all on a page that's called chantalrayway.com slash detox that I kind of put some of my favorite things and some of my favorite supplements that I have that work. But I I really suggest people do this class so that they don't overdo it on killing those parasites. The other thing as far as poop goes, and this is going to sound really nasty, but I literally, when I poop, I examine my poop every single time. Like, and I even do it with my kids and I do it with my husband. So my husband- You examine their poop Their poop too, yeah. So I do it not all the time. I, I examine my poop every single time. What are you looking for? What are, what are some of the <laughs> yeah. trends we want to see? Yes. So first of all, one of the things that has been a major problem for me besides parasites is constipation. And so what people think about constipation is I was pooping every day, sometimes once a day, sometimes twice a day. So in their mind, people will go, I'm not constipated. I pooped today. Or I I'm not constipated. I poop twice today. My dad is an internal medicine doctor. He's actually on the board of medicine in Arkansas. And what he says is that is one of the biggest misconceptions that people have is they think I poop today or twice today. I'm not constipated. But what it actually happens is, let's say you're supposed to poop 12 inches, let's say, like Mm -hmm. that's how much you pooped. Well, what happens is you only pooped six inches. Mm. So now maybe you poop six inches. And so you think I'm not constipated, but you are because there's still six inches stuck in there. And so figuring out the number one, the constipation level that you are. And number two, figuring out your transit time of what your food is going through. So for me, what I suggest people doing is like a beet test. If you hate beets, do it with blueberries, but it's just not as effective. So what you do is you consume the beets and then what you'll do is say, okay, ideally, in my opinion, 18 hours to 24 hours is the right transit time. Um, if you look online, they'll say things like 36 hours to 42 hours and That's longer. Slow. No, yeah. that is not good. That's slow. So in my opinion, 18 to 24 hours is that right transit time. So you just kind of measure it. You just keep looking at your poop and seeing what is in there. Um, So you can, like one of the things I do when I look at my poop is I take these like, like if you buy these plastic spoons and plastic forks that are really big, you Mm -hmm. can buy them like on Amazon 
And you can actually, after you go poop, there's two ways you can do it. You literally, well, one, you can literally just take a tissue paper while you're pooping, just put your hand on there, (laughs) pull your poop out, and then truly examine it and look at, okay, what is the consistency of my poop? Is it, you know, it should look like an ice cream cone, Mm. kind of, you know, it should be nice and soft. It shouldn't be hard. Like I squeeze it and see... How hard is it? Is it in little pebbles like that? If it's in little pebbles, again, you are constipated. Um, Do you have diarrhea? A lot of people think, oh, I have diarrhea. I'm not constipated. No, diarrhea is a form of constipation. And that is a huge myth that people don't understand is that that is a form of constipation. And so... Literally looking at your poop is a game changer. Like looking at the Bristol chart, looking at what color it is, um, looking at, um, you know, one thing I noticed um, a while back was um, when I was pooping, sometimes like I would see like a few bubbles and stuff like that. Well, that is Giardia and that can be like liver flukes in your in your poop. So really going through and figuring out what is in my poop? I'm telling you, if you can fix your gut, then you will fix your health. Mm -hmm. And we all know that. But I don't think people are comfortable. And I want to get people really comfortable with that idea of like, like my son was like, I don't do it all the time, but I want to check his poop and see how it's doing. So he'll poop and he'll be like, mom, I just pooped. You can go check the toilet. (laughs) That's so great that you're teaching him these habits. I'm teaching him that this is, we need to look at your poop and you need to be aware. He actually just created his own. He's 12 years old. It's called Non-Toxic Family. On Instagram, it's Non-Toxic Family now. And he literally is going through. He's so into health. Yeah, you showed me the video. He's great. He's so good at it, isn't he? So good, yeah. He's really, really smart. And so he just, like, he actually, the water that we're drinking right now, the Mountain Mountain Valley, Valley, he did a video on that. And yeah, it was really good. So the looking at your poop. So those watching and listening are just either inspired to do this <laughs> or they're completely weirded out right now. We have two camps. Exactly. But you're right. This is very important because your digestive system, your digestive health is the key to everything. So most people are probably constipated. Stress is one of those factors that co- creates constipation. That might have been what was going on with you. Yes. What are some other things we can do? I, I know taking care of the parasites and all the things that we want to work on, work on upstream are important. But what about right now? What are some things we can do? to get things moving along more uh, efficiently. Yeah. So one of the things that is important if you're doing fasting and you're just eating one meal, a lot of times what I'm seeing and what I've done in the past is that let's say I decided to fast for 24 hours and I was just going to eat one meal. I got myself so ravenous that when I was eating, I was eating so fast, I was barely chewing my food. And so that's another problem that that I had. And I had to start taking HCL um, mm-hmm. for one thing that I didn't know a couple years ago that I finally learned is that with enzymes, HCL is what you take and that will help digest the proteins in your stomach. When you take digestive enzymes, that actually is what digests the food in your small intestines. So you actually need to take HCL and digestive enzymes. So that really helped me. The other thing is just really slowing down because I'm telling you, if someone took a video of me when I was eating, it would be embarrassing (laughs) because I got myself so ravenous. So what I do when I do fasting now I always do something a little bit before I'm actually going to eat my meal. Maybe it's a little bit of an avocado or a little bit of protein, you know, anything that I can do that will slow myself down. A protein or avocado are really, really great. Maybe even a little bit of nuts. I'm I have to personally be careful with nuts because I can eat too many of yeah, them. Yeah, me too. Very <laughs> so, common. So I have to kind of be careful with that. 
But that has been a big tip for me to just start with something, a little bit of protein, and then move on and not get myself to the point that I'm eating crazy. And just, you know, I know it sounds silly, but it's literally with me taking a bite and putting my fork completely down and engaging in conversation with my family. And every one of us, my whole family, we do everything fast. We talk fast, we eat fast, we walk fast. I mean, we just are a fast family. So we have to hold each other accountable. And if I'm going out with someone, I have to say to them, you know, please keep an eye on me. (laughs) Because my natural tendency is to just eat really fast. And I have to really control myself with that. Um, As far as different um, enzymes that I take, I do that at every single meal now. I have to take those enzymes. Um, But as far as killing the parasites, um, there's some different supplements like um, mimosa pudica. That's a big one that really will help. Um, There's too many to list. Um, Berberine is a huge one. But again, berberine, if you take too much berberine to kill those parasites, trust me, you will be on the floor yeah. the next day. You will feel awful. So you have to have a real nice formula to slowly titrate yourself up. And as soon as you start feeling bad, titrate yourself down. And I also suggest doing a full moon protocol, like doing those, instead of doing it all the time, trying to do it around the full moon. I know it sounds a little wah wah woo, but it, I believe a 100% that around the full moon, those parasites come out big time. I agree with that. I do. Yeah. And I think in the keto space in particular, uh, one of the main problems they have with digestion is, yeah, the constipation part, but then fatty stools, loose stools. So those enzymes could help break down the fat taking maybe ox bile, especially for those who don't have a gallbladder, which is such a common procedure to remove it. But overall, you want to go upstream. And if you have an abundance of these parasites, we all have them, as you mentioned, but they're opportunistic and they come out and they they grow when there are other stressors or other things upstream. So we'll put the link for your, your masterclass on how to do this the right way. But what are some tips on breaking down fat efficiently for those who are eating more of a high fat diet on keto. Yeah, one more thing I want to say about the bio um about the parasites. Parasites live in your biofilm in your gut. And so you have to get something there's something I have on my site it's called Biofilm X. But again, too much of it, you'll be mm, on the floor. You'll herx, yeah. And you actually when you poop, you'll see with this Biofilm X you'll see like, it's like film. It's like biofilm. And you will see parasites coming out of your gut. And again, you've got to take like a fork. One of the things that I wanted to also mention, and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, you can actually take, it's called an XO strainer, okay? Mm -hmm. It looks like this and it literally sits perfectly. It's about this big. In your toilet. And you sit it on your toilet and then poop. Mm. And then you literally take it out and then start examining it. Oh, nice. Exo strainer. I'm so, <laughs> I feel like you came up with, like you invented that, but I know that it's been around. That's a great <laughs> idea. Better than grabbing a tissue and pulling it and putting yeah. your hand or it. So if you're going to do yeah, you it. just poop it right there. You, you can get it on Amazon, Exo strainer. Yes. Uh. And I put all the links on that Chantal. It's ChantalRayWay.com slash detox. And I that's put so all cool. these, just Amazon links. Yeah, that's very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, before we move on to the other, ac- the other letters in the acronym, the coffee enema piece, some people have heard of coffee enemas and, you know, we know it supports the liver. Maybe you could give some some general tips why you do it and how often you should do it. Because I know a lot of people who do coffee enemas, they feel, when they do it right, they feel energized, they feel invigorated, and then they do it too much. Mm. And they they lose a lot of minerals because they're doing it like every day, multiple times a day. So maybe some rules of thumb with coffee enemas. Yeah, so one of the biggest things with coffee enemas is the minerals that you're losing. And I want to talk about potassium for just a second. Um, But we can talk about, I want to talk about that later, but I want to mention it now. Okay. When you do a coffee enema, one of the biggest things that people lose, and when you're doing keto in general, I feel like everyone's on this bandwagon of uh, magnesium, 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 right? Which I'm a big fan of magnesium. We all need it. We're all deficient in it. Go magnesium. 
Here's the problem. You know what no one's talking about? Potassium. And when you're doing keto, okay, you are losing sodium, you're losing potassium, and you, in my opinion, you need about 4,200 milligrams of potassium a day minimum for you to be able to feel good. Well, here's the problem. Things that you think about that are high in potassium are bananas, sweet potatoes, potatoes. Well, everyone who's on keto is like, I don't touch bananas. I don't touch potatoes, right? Yeah. And so it's really important that you're looking for foods like salmon is high in potassium. I hate salmon. Oh, you do? Yeah. Avocados are high in <laughs> they're potassium. High. They have so more, they're double really the good. amount than a banana. Avocados yes, do. Yes. Yeah. Avocados are really... And, and it's funny that everyone thinks bananas are so high, but there's 10 other yeah, things you're that are yeah. way higher than it's bananas. It's one of those like diet dogmas that I haven't yeah. died out. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You guys, I'm so excited. We are doing a free masterclass for you. It's actually on nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass. That's non toxicfamily.com slash masterclass. And it's going to be all about how to get rid of your gut infections, how to get rid of parasites. If you have painful digestion, if you're suffering from poor sleep, if you've got constant exhaustion, massive joint pain, or skin issues, then you need to get rid of the parasites that are holding your body hostage. I'm going to tell you right now, you're thinking, I don't have parasites. I don't have parasites. Yes, you do. I have Crystal with me. Crystal, tell them your joke. Yeah. If you have a pulse, then you have a parasite or more. And the thing about parasites is they're sneaky. And even if they came back negative on a stool test that you did before, that doesn't matter. They can still be present. And so on this masterclass, we're going to teach you all the tips and tricks that you might have heard of but didn't know how to use, like diatomaceous earth, pumpkin seed protocols, garlic and berberine and black walnut, because you can't do all of these things, but you need to select a few that work for you. So we're going to go through all of that in this masterclass. All right. And my son created a new site. It's called Non-Toxic Family. And if you're not following, go to nontoxicfamilynow.com or on Facebook, go to Non-Toxic Family. You'll see my son. He does all these great videos on how to be healthy. They're really great. And we actually put the free masterclass on this site. So it's nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass and sign up for free. Look forward to seeing you guys. So it's finding those high potassium foods that you love. And then also, I think, depending on a lot of a lot of people that I'm talk to, they get a lot of leg cramps. They're like yes. constantly getting leg Very cramps. Very common keto and carnivore. Keto, carnivore, fasting. and fasting. Yeah. If you're doing keto, carnivore, fasting, huge thing. People are like, oh, I'm getting leg cramps. Charlie Horse, this, that, and the other. to me all the time in the yes. beginning. Yes. Yeah. 100%, I promise you. You have to increase your sodium, the right sodium, first of all. Yeah. Number two, what's your favorite sodium? I bet it's probably the same. As I love mine. Real, real Salt from Redmond's. They're yes. great. Uh, and then in terms of electrolytes, I use like Element, uh, mm -hmm. Redmond's. Um, yeah. I like Bean Minerals. What about yes. you? So my favorite salt that I love right now is Celtic Sea Salt. Yeah, that's That's good. my favorite. And um, then I guess Pink Himalayan, any kind of one, or Redmond's is probably one of my favorites. But I think people don't realize how much sodium you need as well. You know, again, they say around 3,000 to 4,000, depending on how much you're losing and exercising and stuff like that, of milligrams of sodium as well. So I want to really stress that with people is just, I'm not a big like track this, track that, track that. I promise you, if you look at how much potassium you're eating in a day, you're not getting enough. And you will realize that when you increase your potassium, what happens is your hydration level really, really increases. So then you're feeling hydrated instead of constantly. I know a lot of people who are like, I'm just thirsty. Do you ever get people who are like, I don't know, I'm just thirsty all yeah. the time. Do you get people who constantly? Yeah. So what do you say to people who say, I'm thirsty all the time? I mean, if um, first I check if they're diabetic because that's mm -hmm. usually a symptom. They're urinating their sugar. But yeah, they're, they're, they're not replenishing their electrolytes, to your point. 
So one of the things that um, I have my students do, especially if they're new to keto, is I have them drink this keto camp cocktail, as I call it. So it has water, it has apple cider vinegar, it has sea salt in it, but it also has cream of tartar specifically for the potassium because cream of tartar has a high amount of potassium. It's used for baking, but we put it in the water mm -hmm. because to your point, that's, that's key for them to feel better. They also, mm -hmm. when they're dehydrated, they uh, feel hungry sometimes too. They get mixed up that it's actually a dehydration, dehydration feeling versus a hunger pang. So by staying more hydrated, it actually alleviates some of their hunger pangs. I talked with a nurse that's a full-time nurse at the emergency room. And she said that whenever someone comes in with muscle pains or like they have like leg cramps, she says they run and give them mustard, just regular mustard. Mustard. It's the weirdest thing. And she's like, as soon as they take it, within seconds, it goes away. Is it high in potassium? And it's, she, I think it's the sodium level. Oh, the sodium. It must okay. be the sodium. Interesting. But she said it's like a magic hack that they do at the hospital. I haven't. Um, you know, tried it yeah. and done it. A, I know a lot of lot, people have done like pickle juice. Pickle juice is, I, for me, I'm telling you right now, if I'm doing a long fast, I don't care what anyone says. If I'm like, you know how you get when you're on a long fast, you're like, I'm dying. <laughs> I can't go anymore. I take a, and it it's different. I don't know why. It's different than salt. I can take a tablespoon of pickle juice and I like, I'm like a whole yeah. new girl. I love pickle juice. Yeah, <laughs> it's a game changer, especially with longer fasts. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so we covered poop and parasites. Yes. Are we are complete there yes. or anything else you want? I think to... that's good. Okay, and then you said you're going to touch a little bit more about potassium later. So SPA, what's A. A? So A stands for air. And, you know, with our house, um, you know, when we built our, our house, actually, we bought as a foreclosure when we first bought it, and it was vacant for like a year. So um, when we had the guy come and like look at it for mold, um, you know, the guy said to us, he said, I'm telling you, 100% of all the houses have mold in it. He's, He's right. like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, so your house does have mold, and we did some mold remediation. But one of the things that we did is really put air filters. And I put some of the Amazon links of some of the air filters I have, but I'm a big proponent. You can get these air filters now on Amazon for like a hundred bucks. I mean, if you want to go to 300 or 400, you can, or, or buy some even higher yeah, ones. Yeah, I have a really fancy one right there. Yeah. And how do you love it? Oh, it's great. I got three of them. It's yeah. not cheap. They're they're like $1,200 each, but uh, that one in particular is a really, really good And one. which brand it's, is it's that called, one? It's called Jasper. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's like the Ferrari of... Uh, yes. Actually, the owner is flying in in two weeks to do an interview here. Oh, my gosh. But, but You'll you, have to introduce me. I will. I'll, I would love to. His yeah. name is Mike. But to your point, you don't have to go and buy a very expensive one. Uh, if you could afford it, great. That's the top of the line, but there's cheaper alternatives out yeah. there. Yeah, and I mean, if you can... Get the Ferrari, right? Yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> I, I that, got three. Yeah, because it's that important. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that I want to say about the air is that the more, because a lot of people are like, they'll put that one, they'll buy the Ferrari, they'll put one in one room, and then they don't have anything else in the rest of the house. Yeah, so I think point. the number you have, a minimum of three in yeah. each house. I'll probably get more. Too. Yeah. When he comes, he'll <laughs> yeah. probably talk you into Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll probably when, get more. Bring me one when you <laughs> yeah, come, exactly. by the yeah. way. Just take it on the flight with you. Exactly. Um, so that's that's my biggest thing is just air. making sure that your air quality. I, I, I'm such a Nazi about perfume or me any too. kind of sense. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm very sensitive I, to it. I'm so sensitive. Yeah. So I don't, when, when I have people over, I, I know this sounds weird, but I have this conversation with them and I say, I'm highly allergic to any kind of perfumes. Even if somebody has like deter, you know, laundry yeah, detergent. Yeah, you can smell it. Where it's like gain yeah. detergent. I could smell it when I walk by my neighbors who have it in their driveway yes. or their uh, garage and they're, they're washing clothes. I smell it. Yeah, so any fragrance so you at saw all. Not, you saw not allowed in my house. No. Respectfully. Yes, respectfully. <laughs> and it's just because it makes me feel so awful. One of, I, I hope he doesn't listen to this podcast, but one of my husband's friends. <laughs> I hope friends, he does. <laughs> one of my husband's friends, I had to tell him, he, was, he wasn't he was wearing cologne. He was wearing um, deodorant, like mm -hmm. a spray deodorant. Yeah, yeah. 
It was so, yeah, one of those acts or whatever. It was so potent, I couldn't even go downstairs. I told him, I said, Ryan, go tell him to take a shower and never put that on You're doing him a favor. Those are are, um, obesogens. These are chemicals that create fat cells in our bodies and they inflame us. So you did him a favor. Yeah. Let me ask you this though, because... Uh, if you take Ubers, I, I, I hop into, what do you do when you walk, hop into an Uber and they're blasting some Febreze air freshener yes. at you? Yes, and I actually ask them to remove them. Um, so what you I do, do I yes. I haven't done that yet. I ask them to remove it. But and it's, what, what, do, to throw them out? To or throw just, them out, to literally throw them out. And I tell them, right now, if you throw this out, I will pay you an extra $20. Interesting. And I, <laughs> then I give them the whole spiel on yeah. why they're toxic and why that, they shouldn't have it. That is a really good. Tip. And they literally will throw it out. Yeah. And then I keep, I undo the windows. Yeah, let it, let it and air out. Let it air out. And I just tell them, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I'm so allergic to this that I will pay you twenty dollars if you will literally just throw this out right now. So you just tip them on, on the app twenty on bucks. The app, so you do that's, that's a really good idea. It's yeah. worth it, especially if it's a longer Uber ride. Yes, exactly. And then um, you you can actually now on Uber message your people beforehand, beforehand. Mm. and you say See. something like i'm very highly allergic to any kind of air fresheners or anything like that is there any way you can remove all air fresheners before i get into the vehicle and undo the the car window smart because i can't do it yeah i i literally would if i if i i've never had any pushback because i'm so yeah ni- yeah it'd be is, nice you to be and you're so and you're tipping nice. them i mean i mean i don't they see and they, them- if they have a problem with it i mean you yeah, you have to be so nice and you have to tip big. What if you go into an elevator and somebody in there, it's a short ride. So yeah, it's a short really, ride. Okay. I don't really But that happens panic. often when I go yeah. into the elevator. My old building that I used to live in, it's like, yeah. Oh. Or I would walk into one and nobody was in there, but somebody had just been in there and it just reeks like perfume. Well, we, we have actually done this at a restaurant probably, and I would say at least eight times this year. We have sat in a restaurant and whoever's sitting and... They could even be seven feet away from me, but their perfume was so strong. And I told my husband, I was like, I can't sit here. Yeah. And I literally had to get up and ask the the waitress or the hostess, I'm you. so sorry, but yeah. I can't sit here. I'm allergic to perfume and I'll move. When you came here, did you smell any cologne or perfume? No, yeah, none uh-uh. of that's in here. It's nope. not allowed in here. No. So there you go. Air, um, that's really important. Anything you want to touch upon with the air before we move on to the next one? No. Okay. So um, we have four. What's yes. the four? Um, so let's see. S P A Spa Four F. F is fasting. Mm, of course. F is fasting. Chantal of course, Ray. my Come my on. favorite thing that I love to talk about. Um, people always call me the fasting queen. And one of the, the things, mi- the mic. Oh, yeah. one of the things that I have really learned about fasting is that you can really do it too much. Yes. And so I have this, I talk about hormesis and I have a very easy way of explaining it to people. And I say that hormesis is a way that you add stress to your body, but it is in a beneficial way. Like it's adding stress and finding that window. So if you don't do enough, or if you do too much, you want to find this like perfect window of where it's really beneficial. And I think that's what happens with fasting that people get it wrong. And I'll give you an example. I had done a seven day fast and then um, our church, the guy, the pastor came and said, I would like everyone to do a 21 day fast. It was like in January. And he said, but when he was doing the fast, it was just from breakfast, like skipping breakfast and lunch and then eating dinner. So OMAD for, for 21 days. Basically for 21 days. Yeah. And, um, they said, and, but for me, I was like, oh, that's nothing. Right. Like cocky me. Right. I was like, no way. I'm just going to do a 21 day fast. I can do that. I've already done seven days. I'll just do water. So on my eighth day of doing the fast, I got so sick. I was just feeling so bad. And I had done a seven-day fast, water fast before with no prob- no real problems. 
On the eighth day, one of my friends is actually an emergency room doctor, and I had texted her. I said, I feel so bad. It's not even funny. I've never felt this Were worse. Were you dizzy, headache? I just, I can't even explain sick. it. I just felt sick. Okay. I felt so bad. I went to, she's only a mile from my house. She's like, get your butt in here. Mm -hmm. Come see me. I was kind of embarrassed, but she was like, just come in. She came and see me, and she took her prescription pad, and she wrote, Go home and eat a baked potato <laughs> and a big old steak. She literally wrote that, that was your on her prescription eat. pad. Yeah. And I did that and I went back to eating, being fine. But back to with the fasting, that's when, when you are finding the your hermetic, hermetic zone. zone. Like yeah. Way for you. yeah. I, I, that was too much for me. Yeah. And there was two reasons why it was too much for me. Number one, because I've been under such high stress, my the only medicine I take is a, a natural desiccated thyroid medicine. Well, every time I'd go get my blood work done, the doctor was like, Chantel, your thyroid's not doing well at all. We need to increase you. We need to increase you. We need to increase you. So here he was increasing my thyroid meds. And now when I'm doing, when you're doing a water fast, it's really, really important if you're taking any kind of medicine or if you're taking thyroid medicine for sure, that your thyroid's now working on overdrive. So what was happening with me on day eight was my thyroid was out of control. And I, I, I because I didn't titrate down that thyroid medicine, that's why I was so sick and wasn't able to do it. I don't believe you can do that long of a fast if you're on thyroid medicine that is kind of too high, Yeah, you know? Yeah, that's a very important lesson. And then for those who are diabetic who take uh, blood sugar reducing meds or insulin, like if you're going to do a long fast, which is going to dramatically lower those blood sugars, and then you continue taking insulin and blood sugar meds, not a good idea. You could go hypoglycemic. So to your point, Chantel, look at your numbers, work with a practitioner to titrate if you need to the meds, if you're going to do something like that. Yes, exactly. And then the other thing is before that fast, you know, one of the things that I literally get an email about on a regular basis is they're like, I lost 30, after I read your book, I lost 30 pounds and I did so good, but I still have 20 more to go. And I am on an absolute stale, like I am completely stuck. And so for that fast that I was telling you about, I didn't, I didn't eat very much. Like I didn't do any feast before that fast. And so I kind of was doing a lot of like intermittent fasting and kind of one day. So I just, it was too much for me. I didn't have enough fuel for me to be able to go that long. And I believe that if you're going to do those longer fasts, like you should do, you know, a one day fast, then move to a two day fast, then go to a three day, then seven days or whatever. And I didn't I didn't build enough muscles for my fasting and I didn't prepare with enough kind of, I was already in a, a kind of a little bit too much of a fasted you didn't, state you didn't before build, I You started. didn't build yourself up beforehand. You should have done more feasting. Build yourself up is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. And then, and then you're, you're talking about fasting like a muscle, which ties into the hormesis thing. You're going to gradually increase that hormetic ceiling, right? By doing okay, 24 hours and then 32 and building it up versus going right into a seven day or, or longer. Yes. Very important exactly. lesson. And then with the, the, the question that I was saying about how that people are like, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, yeah. I'm stuck. I will tell you when I have been stuck, the number one thing that works for me is adding feast days in. And when I say feast days, I'm never an advocate of overeating ever. Okay. So I'm just talking about eating more than I normally am, but I'm still not overeating. And I, I don't even like saying the word feasting because then it automatically feels like a cheat meal. Yeah. It's cheat we, meal it's, and like eating yeah, everything. Correct. This is a different terminology. It's not a cheat meal. It's an intentional feast meal. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not going out and eating a bunch of chips that have seed oil anyway. Yeah, right. I'm just talking about on those days, I'm eating a lot, maybe I'm eating a lot more sweet potatoes, a lot more potatoes, a lot more good carbs for myself. I'm still eating clean, but I'm eating foods that, you know, I might eat an, in, 
entire sweet potato that's this big. Well, I'm still not overeating in that meal. Um, I'm just eating a lot more really good carbs for myself and I'm eating more than I normally would and I'm extending my, my fasting window. So in general, I eat in about a four to six hour window on any given day. But then there's days where now I'm adding in an eight hour window. There's very few times that I eat more than an eight hour window. Maybe I'll do nine hours. Um, but still, even just going from a four hour window to an eight hour window, mixing that up and adding a lot more healthy carbs and kind of when you're, when you're stuck, change it up. I, I just cannot... I cannot stress that enough is that people don't want to do it and they feel, if you think about bodybuilders, I have a ton of friends, this. a ton of friends that do bodybuilding. And do you know the day before that, that they do the, sh the sh show, yeah. they're eating a whole bunch of carbs. Yeah. So do you, are you a proponent of that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's so important. So the, every every great fitness coach understands that principle of mixing things up to keep the body adapting and guessing and get them results. So a great personal trainer will apply these different modalities, right? So one week with the client, they might do high weights, uh, high uh, repetition, excuse me, lower weight. And then the next week, the complete opposite because it keeps the body adapting. So what you just said, fasting is great, but we also want to feast. And then we want to fast and we want to feast. We want to change the schedule up. We want to. We don't want to do the same thing over and over and over because then the body stops adapting and then it plateaus. So I'm a big proponent of the feast days. I call them flex days. Yeah. Well, my husband gives me a hard time because I have four different personal trainers that I work with. <laughs> four and personal yes, trainers? Yes. How do you and rotate between I, them? <laughs> I know. But here's the thing. The reason why I do, and I promise you, one person, they change it up a little, but they don't change it up enough. So that's why you want four because you yes. know it's going to be four completely different routines. Four completely different. And that'll different. make you adapt. And four and different gyms. Uh, wow, wow. So that'll prevent plateaus yeah. for sure. Yeah, four different gyms, <laughs> four different people. And if I promise you, if you look at the workouts that, that whoever your trainer is, even if they're good, they themselves, it's kind of like the food, right? I literally have had people and I've done it over and over and over again. Because what I do is if someone's stuck, I say, Look, I just want to see like, write down what you eat, eat same in foods. a couple weeks. They're eating the same foods. Yeah. It's the same eight to 10 foods Correct. over and over and over again. And I'm telling you, my husband and I go out to eat quite a bit, but we found the restaurants that they don't, you know, that they're organic that they don't use seed oils. Even if they use seed oils, they know with us, yeah, right? They know they how to replace them. They know how to replace them. And what I like about going out to eat is that I know myself, if you if you think about you, we have a girl at the house that cooks all of our meals, but I tell her what to make and we have all these recipes. We rotate kind of the same thing over and over, yeah. over the same two weeks. So when we go out to eat, I eat things that I never would eat and all kinds of different things. So I'm actually not, I'm actually a little bit of a proponent of going out to eat as long as you're picking the restaurants that are using organic food or if they're doing grass-fed beef or if they're doing um, all kind. I mean, we go to nice restaurants. We're not going to... El Cheapo, El Cheapo. Yeah, they're not going to McDonald's. I don't know, I don't know your four personal trainers, do you have a favorite? I do, but I can't tell which <laughs> one it is on the show. All right, no worries. All right, spa four, and then we have the win. Yes, yeah, so, well, four, um, the four is O-R. So O stands for oxygen, and R stands for rest. So Ah, got so it. So with oxygen, one of the things, I just got a massage at a spa, and the guy, the whole time when he was massaging me, he was like, <sighs> and trying to get me to breathe. And he was like, Chantel, you have the most, he said, you sound like a scared squirrel. He said, you have the most shallow breath of everyone, anyone that I've ever worked on before. And what I've really 
started to learn how to do. I'm starting to go into the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. I am just doing a lot more breath work and being intentional about my oxygen and like really with my breathing, spending time meditating and doing breath work, which is really important. And then the last one is rest. So, or it's the next one is rest, but my sleep, you know, with the aura ring, yeah, I was getting every single night I would get, you know how you get a crown? Yeah. I would get it every single night, every single night, every single night. And then over the last year where I haven't been doing as well, I've been getting up a lot at night. Mm. And so I have been trying not to drink as much water, number one, right before bed and really trying to get my fluids and my potassium and and my liquids more during the day. Um, But I've kind of implemented a few more nightly routines to get my sleep back to that crown where I'm getting it every single night. I always take the bioptimizers, you know, magnesium. Magnesium breakthrough, yeah. Um, But I've been adding um, some potassium as well, which has been helping me and just in my food, really increasing my potassium, which really has been helping me sleep better at night as well. Yeah, sleep is so important. Nothing yes. nothing impacts me more than, than poor sleep does. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. So spa four and then the, which is T, the T stands for thyroid. And one of the things I want to talk about with thyroid is just the natural thing is, is that people get on thyroid medicine and then they go in and the, the labs are not right. And then they say, okay, well, let's increase you and let's increase you and let's increase you. And they keep bringing you up and bringing you up and bringing you up. And so my biggest thing is, is to get to the root of the problem of why your thyroid is not working. And, you know, we t- talk all the time about the, the cell and healing the cell. But I've actually now, instead of increasing my thyroid, I'm slowly bringing it down and down and down. So that's one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about is that I do the castor oil pack every single night. Okay, my son just did a video on the non-toxic yeah. family. Um, sorry, I have, I just, I've been sick for like two weeks and now I'm just at the very end of it. Like I'm pretty much... My, all my snot's clean. You sound fine. It, but I'm okay. Um, so the castor oil pack on your um, liver. Mm-hmm. So what happens is people don't realize with thyroid, if you're just taking T4, you people don't realize the T4 has to convert to T3. And where does that conversion happen? In your liver. Yeah. Well, if your liver's not doing well, then you're in trouble. And so by me doing this castor oil pack, I would do castor oil packs here and there. I am now doing the castor oil pack every single night. And a lot of people, I think in a lot of videos, they talk about doing like a tablespoon of castor oil. I'm going to tell you right now, folks, that's not going to cut it. When I do a castor oil pack, I'm putting about this much castor wow, oil. Wow. A lot. Yeah, that's that's I'm like, for about, those who are listening, that's like, I don't know, seven tablespoons? No, but it's probably about five tablespoons. <laughs> okay, got it. It's about five tablespoons. I suggest about four to five tablespoons of castor oil. If you're in a bad place, if you're, because a, a lot of times when you're not doing well, your liver's not detoxifying, your liver's in trouble. So how do you prevent it from getting on the bed sheets? So I have, I use a castor oil pack that, is kind of it has a both sides of it it has like a, it's like cotton on one uh-huh. side the problem with it is is that it builds up so much castor oil and you have to be really careful that when you clean it you don't put it in your drain because it can really clog yes. up your drains but yeah you can take any kind of they say that you should use wool wool but i don't cuz that's so itchy so you can do like a cotton pack. And then, I put, and then you put your, your, then you have your shirt over it and then you tuck your shirt in because I use something similar, but uh-huh. it still gets on my bed sheets. It sometimes. does. Yeah. 
Well, I put the castor oil pack on and then I actually will, what I've started to do is before bed, I actually take a heat warmer and put it on. I take a heat warmer that looks like this. And if you want to do it, you can just do it there Mm. for about 30 minutes. You can do it for 30 to 45 minutes. If you add that heat pack on it, you don't have to keep it on all night. The heat allows it to penetrate the, faster? Yes, the heat will allow it to penetrate and then you don't need to do it all night. So if that's happening, and then if you go to my site, you can see the exact castor oil pack that I use to cover it up that doesn't make it, you know, that keeps it on. But I used to wear it all night. I just am a lot happier with this new method I'm doing. I just do it for 45 minutes. I'm usually laying in bed with my son, snuggling, watching some fun show together, or we we actually listen to a sermon every single night together Great. for 20 minutes. And then we also, um, you know, watch some fun show. So by that time... The castor oil has done penetrated into my liver. Yeah, it's a great it's a great point with the the thyroid. Most doctors who are prescribing the T4, they're not even looking at the T3 levels to see if it's converting. Or if they are, they don't understand that the liver is helping to make that conversion. So they're not even checking their liver function, liver health. So castor oil, easy way to support the liver. Do it. I recommend everybody do it. Combine that with the coffee enema and all the other tips. So what a great way to support that. What I call mm-hmm. the soccer mom liver. Yes. Does everything for us. Exactly. What's left here with the acronym? Okay. So SPA for, we talked about rest, the H is hormones. So with the hormones, I am taking um, a little bit of all natural hormones that I'm taking, um, some progesterone and estrogen. On my site, there's this new thing that I found, and it's actually supposed to be for when you're um, trying to get pregnant. So you can actually pee in this little cup, and then you can check your hormones. You can check your progesterone, tr- check your estrogen levels to see what they are. And that's the one thing that I think people get wrong is like, even guys, they will take these this testosterone and they're taking like too much of it. And then that messes with their estrogen. Then they have to take an estrogen blocker. Yeah. You know, so figuring out this new machine that I found um, that is basically where you can test your hormones on a regular basis just with your urine has kind of been a game changer so I can see kind of my ups and downs. Very cool. So for the... When so W is water. We talked about that. Yeah, clean water, real spring water. Uh, Go ahead, continue. Yeah, so I found on Amazon for a couple hundred dollars, and I put the link in that chantalrayway.com slash detox. It's actually a water filter that has a remineralizer in it. You can put it under your sink. It's literally a couple hundred dollars. So you're drinking that water, which I love. It's my favorite, my son's favorite. But one of the things he says is that he, he actually has this cute video and he's like, hey, here's the one downside is when you pick up that water, it is so heavy. So if you can have it in your sink, you can get it for a couple hundred dollars. You're saving a lot of money on that. And it has a remineralizer in there. Cool. So and then just really watching the the plastic. I think I've been doing all these studies now. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Fiji water, right? But it's again in in the plastic containers. And I'm doing more and more research on how they are finding these microplastics. It's unbelievable. If you start doing the research on it, you won't want to do another thing with plastic. So I saw a study that showed the average uh, American eats five grams of plastic each week, which equates to a, the size of a credit card. It's crazy. Five grams each week. Everybody's eating a plastic credit card every week. It's insane. Yeah. So I've really done a, a good job, not great job. And I, I have one other little hack that I did. You can buy these glass jars that kind of look like that on Amazon, okay? Yep. And it has this cute little lid. And then you use that remineralizer. And refill it. Fill it up. And then just have them, in, excuse me, have them in the refrigerator and you could keep them there 
And it's wonderful. So then, because you know you have, you need to like grab and go. Yeah. And those can get expensive. Yeah. So if you buy that hundred dollar remineralizer, I'm um, water filter and remineralizer, fill it up in those glass bottles. That'll really help with kind of trying to get rid of your microplastics. Yeah, great tip right there. I like that. Okay, so we have two more letters. Yes. I and N. Yes. So I is iron. And I found this liver supplement that is made with grass-fed beef. And, you know, I didn't realize how my health would transform when I was eating these liver organs. And so I don't care if you're vegan. I have a good friend of mine who... She watched that show, The Game Changer, or whatever yeah, the documentary, it is, right? The, and she's the like, I decided I'm going vegan. I said, okay, that's fine, but I'm making you take this liver supplement. And she was okay with it. She's, she said she's going to. Okay. I don't know. I'm actually, she's actually, we're, she's the one we're taking her plane on the way back. Okay, so got I it. Need to, well, I'm that walking. would be a game changer for yeah. her vegan diet for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I told her that. Um, I really want you to do that. And she's, cause she wasn't vegan before. It's not like she's been vegan her whole life. Yeah. The documentary motivated yeah. her. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, that supplement. And then also, you know, I know you had on your podcast, Morley Robbins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so just really looking at that iron and copper, um, relationship, relationship yeah. is really important. So I want to encourage people to do that. And then the last one is, what's the N. letter? N. N, just nutrients. So um, the N kind of stands for, I believe that a, for me personally, so I was, my when I was pregnant with my son, I threw up six times a day minimum every single day. For and the, so, uh, the all, entire The entire time. Wow. Yes, it was awful. And then between the age of 20 and 23, I was bulimic. So the pregnancy, I didn't try to throw up. But yeah. back when I was 20 and 23, so my stomach acid was so bad that, and, and it it's still just not where it needs to be, that I have to take those enzymes and I have to make sure I'm getting the nutrients in my body because I'm thinking I'm getting them but if they're not being digested properly. And so for me personally, I had to do a little bit of food combining where if you're doing the keto diet, the nice thing is if you ever are going to have like a sweet potato or a regular potato or something like that, what really helped in my digestion is A, taking those enzymes on a regular basis, but also doing some food combining. And it was because my digestion was so poor um, that eating foods like with like greens and proteins together is fine. But I like if I was going to eat a sweet potato, I'm going to eat it at a separate time. Yeah. That really helped me with my digestion. Yeah, that's a good tip right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like an old, uh, something that I learned about that food combining many, many years ago, but mm -hmm. it's so practical, especially in your situation. Yeah, with the for someone acid. like me, like other people, if you don't have a problem, yeah. it, you don't need it. But if you have prop, which a lot of people also right now are struggling with H. pylori and SIBO, yeah. those yeah. two gut infections really mess with the um, stomach acid in your stomach. So again, you might need to really up and back to what I said, you don't need just digestive enzymes. You need HCL and digestive enzymes. And if it's still not great, like when you look at your poop, back to the poop, do you see any undigested particles in your poop? If you see any at all, hello, ding, 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 Red ding. Yeah. You need... HCL, you need to stomach acid, I mean, um, digestive enzymes, you need to do the food combining. And number three, you need to chew your food. Because if you're like me and want to eat fast, 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 forget it, Jack, you're not going to be able to digest those nutrients like you need to. Yeah, great point. And on top of that, millions of people take antacids, which make the situation even worse. I have, oh. a, I have a final question for you. Mm -hmm. Well, your podcast, uh, the Waste Away uh, mm -hmm. podcast, 
everybody go listen to it. You also have a book, which we'll put down below. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the website, chantelrayway.com slash detox right. to get all those resources. Mm -hmm. Anywhere else you want them to go before I ask the last question? No, I think that's it. Okay. Last question is about gratitude, mm -hmm. which I call vitamin G, my mm -hmm. favorite supplement. Yes. It'll help with stomach acid. It'll help with the thyroid. I think it'll help yes. with everything, right? So I want to ask you, Chantel, what do you uh, have vitamin G for today? What are you grateful for today? Yeah. I would say probably my husband and my son are my two things that I'm so, so grateful for. The two of them, you know, like with my son, he, I literally tell him every single day, you are everything I've ever wanted in a son and more. And, you know, him being so passionate about his health has just and you know doing these videos you guys have to go to these and watch they're these great videos. share his handle again it's non-toxic family on facebook and non-toxic family now on instagram on instagram but we'll put that in the notes down yeah, below. yeah yeah they're really good and then my husband has taken such a huge step to he remember that antacids you used to take he used to take them oh did finally he? i got him to stop taking good. them and doing digestive enzymes but he he actually did the NAD um, IVs. Mm, nice. How many hours? He did it for five days in a row. Wow. Five IVs in a row. So he would get there, and he said it was awful. He said it was awful, awful, how, awful. How, how much? Because some people um, do it shorter and take the pain. Some people extend it. Like how many hours on average do you remember? I think it was an hour. Oh, that's like pretty one. short. I think it was like an hour each one. So five days in a row for an hour. Wow. But you can ask him tonight. I'll ask him at dinner. Yeah. Um, but basically, um, he has now doing the ice baths. He nice. does a cold plunge. He'd go to the store and he would go get ice and take it in our bath. He does the ice plunge. He does the red light therapy. He's just taking action and his just even what he's eating. I mean, he used to eat horribly. And now he's just really, he realizes what, how he feels so much better. He's lost like 15 pounds. He has really built a lot of muscle. You know, he eats mostly kind of like a keto diet with keto-ish is mm -hmm. what I call it, mm -hmm. you know? And so the two of them have really, they used to fight me so much. You know, mm -hmm. and it would be like, oh, mom would be this or, you know, mom, don't be so anal about this, that and the other. And now they both are really embracing it. And it's just making me so, so happy and so awesome. proud. That is so cool to see. You've inspired them to do that. I'm sure they're asking you questions now, which is super yes. cool. You get to actually coach them. Yeah, Chantel, fun. thank you for making the adventure here. I know that there's Miami traffic. That's pretty wild, yes. but you did it. Appreciate the conversation, yes. our round two conversation. For those who are listening and you want to watch the video version, that's on YouTube. So youtube.com slash keto camp. Go subscribe. And I want to say one more thing yeah. I'm grateful for. And I want to say I'm so grateful for you because I feel like you, I've never seen anyone just pour out the way that you do and just give so unselfish, selfishly and just content and content and content and just really the way that you care about people's health and not, you know, your podcast is Keto Camp and you do focus on keto, but you're really just so big picture. You know, we're both so passionate about, yes, am I fasting queen? Yes. Am I passionate about fasting? Yes. But that's one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And you've been able to take that whole thing and go, okay, yes, keto is a piece, but I'm also passionate about this, this, and this, and the way that you pour into people and everything that you're doing in the health space, just I'm so grateful for. Thank you, Sean. So I receive that. <laughs> Likewise, I love what you're doing. And now I get to go on your podcast yes, right here. We're just going to exactly. hit stop and then hit record for your podcast. Yes. So thank you so much. Everybody thank go you. check out Chantel. We're going to put all the information referenced down below. And then go listen to her podcast because we're about to record one right now. So thank you again, Chantel. Thank you so much.